Gosh, thank you. What a great warmer fact. Gosh, I've been feeling a bit warmer now. Um, yes, yeah, so um, just get the clicker working here. How can coffee save the world? I've got eight minutes to save the world with coffee. I usually take about eight hours. Uh, on a Saturday, you'll see me even behind my roaster in, in, in the shop talking for on end about, about all, the, all, the, all, the, all the facts that I know about coffee and trying to relay it to the, con to the consumer. Because I, I see the roaster being in this fantastic place, in this, in this long supply chain, which takes 400 man-hours to produce a pound of beans. And I get to spend about 15 minutes with it, roasting it, transforming those 40 compounds to a thousand different flavors. The barista, along the way, the, there have been many and many hands to produce that coffee. Um, some engaged in hard work at Origin. Some engaged in softer work. Don't say that to my baristas. They think it's pretty hard work. But uh, we, um, we, we basically, yeah, we, have, um, we have two fantastic cafes uh, in, in town, as you know, probably. Um, but I try to make sense of this supply chain, this, this strange beast where 80% of the world's coffee is controlled by just five companies. To use another 80-20 rule, 80% of the world's coffee is produced by small farmers with just an acre of land or less. And here am I, towards the end of that supply chain, trying to make sense of it all, trying to link up um, this fantastic opportunity that we've been given in, 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 in having this terrific shop, which I know is a local institution, but it's also got its place. There, there, there is not, there's not a single roaster I know that I've met up and down the, up and down the, the, the coffee world that can't delve his hands into that beautiful sack of green beans without thinking about all the, all the supply chain that's come before him. Uh, so you inevitably make connections, and you inevitably want to try and make sense and make, see what kind of purpose you've got to try and encourage other things to flow down the supply chain. It's not just about goods coming up from one end and money going down the other. Um, it's, about, it's about the ideas, and it's about uh, goodwill that, that, that flows up and down the supply chain. When I had a visit from uh, Tedese Mascala, the head of the Aromia Farmers Unions uh, in Ethiopia, he came to see us in the shop and the roastery, uh, and he had one burning question. At that time, Ethiopian coffee was going through a terrible crisis, and the government there wanted to bulk all the coffee together in one huge, huge container and just say, right, there's Ethiopian coffee. Much easier, let's sell it that way. But he wanted to add value to the farmers. And he asked me, how can we add value? And I said one word, traceability. You know where they're making the best coffee. You know where, which farms are doing the best job. Give us that coffee, that quality, and we'll pay you more for it. And I'll charge my customers more for it. And they'll be quite willing to do that. Um, and so he had a wonderful day in the, in the cafe, tasting coffees, as he said. I don't drink wine, but I'm tasting coffees like fine wines. I said, yes, that's exactly the idea. We can raise the level of connoisseurship amongst the public and get them to pay more um, and gra gra gradually build this, this fantastic um, this value to, to, the, to the coffee bean. Um, this is a problem that most roasters have when we drink a cup of coffee. Armies come marching in. <laughs> ideas come marching in, sorry, like an army, which is one of Balzac's comments. Um, first, the, first, uh, the first origin place I went to was El Salvador, a beautiful Rainforest Alliance farm producing organic coffee. We worked with him for nine years until last year when he had a terrible blight called the Roya, the rust, and he's had to stump all his trees. We've had to find other sources, but he's built up a certain amount of financial security to be able to weather this, this terrible storm, which is happening across the, across the mainly Central and South America. Rainforest Alliance and Fair Trade are just, one of, just two of 400 different certifications that exist now in the world. Um, a, a sign, I think, of the goodwill that, that is waiting to pour down the, the supply chain. In Colombia, we went to visit farmers there who, who were previously farming illegal crops, now moving over to coffee. Fantastic change for the better. So changing lives for the better, not just at origin, but at home as well. This huge insatiable thirst that we have for coffee is, is, is a, I mean, undoubtedly a fantastic boom on the high street. I know in the future we're going to have everything is going to be a sort of coffee shop if we're not careful. But um, basically at Atkinson's, like we, we took over about 10 years ago, we had just two part-time staff. We've now got two cafes, 28 staff, Average age of about 22, if you ignore the, the management level. So really, really fantastic, active, youthful, thriving industry with careers there for people. Serious careers, not just jobs, not just passing through. I like to work with family <coughs> farms as well. 
at the other end of the supply chain, something I can relate to, because this huge behemoth in the middle that's supplying these five huge com co companies, it's kind of commodity coffee. I'm talking about lovely little gourmet producers that are giving us fantastic coffees, something I can sort of relate to. So this is Mr. Beerman's family in Sumatra that I went to visit, and I've been having his coffee now for the last few years. More and more coffee every year. We started off with two sacks a month, now I'm taking ten sacks a month from him. As we grow, he's growing, it's a mutual benefit. Other benefits we've suggested is from the wine world. Like, what about single varieties? Give us your single varieties. You know, we can market those. We've got our, we, our background is in marketing and media and all these savvy stuff that we can help, help us to, to raise the level of the, the value of the products for the farmers. S also, another idea I had in Kenya when I saw this ancient old stump of a coffee bush, about 80 years old, I thought, well, Yavin, we've got that in, in, the, in the wine world. That can add a lot more to the idea. More complex flavours because the, the roots are delving deeper. And the lower the yield, but the higher the complexity and, the, and therefore the value. Uh, Ethiopia was, was, uh, was, was the place to go for any coffee roaster. Uh, this is one of my favourite places, uh, Kenteri, uh, my first washing station that I visited. That's now a central plank of the coffees that we produce. But the thing I want to say about Ethiopia is that it's, it's, so, it's so infused with coffee. It's, their, they, it's where coffee originated from, and it's, they actually consume 53% of the coffee they produce, even though it's their main cash export. Um, Completely uh, in contrast to, to other, other countries. Um, for example, in India, which I came back from recently, we've got a, a, an area called Raku Valley. Never grown coffee there before. It's just started to come through onto the market now. Buy it. It's fantastic coffee. Uh, and the, the, the story behind it is, is just amazing. These, these tribes marginalized from society, way, very high up in the, in the, in the eastern Pradesh, uh, in, 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 in a beautiful, beautiful countryside. Um, but the, the, the countryside was, was, was dying. There was, there, was, there was no life really in the soil. It had been over farmed, had been wrongly farmed, and now a fantastic organisation is helping them and getting, well, they're getting the money from big corporations, ironically, to help them with, with their, their own, their own um, corporate social responsibility programmes and their carbon offsetting, planting millions and millions of trees. I think they're aiming to plant uh, it's about four million trees in the next couple of years. Um, they're showing them how to do some holistic farming where they, they recycle the, the, the cow paps, which they've got plenty of. And you make these cow pap pits and we make a fantastic fertiliser which can, one kilo can, can enrich an acre of land. And that's the difference that we're seeing there. However, they, they, have no coffee, they have no coffee culture there. It's been grafted onto them, but it's given them a cash crop that they never had before. They were just subsistence farming. And I actually asked them, the group of the villagers there, have you ever tasted your coffee? And they hadn't tasted it. They didn't know what they did. It's just a magic tree that just gave them money. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to have a couple of years' time, perhaps with a little film crew. And we'll see their faces when they actually taste their coffee. Think, no, no, you're looking fantastic. This is amazing. <laughs> um, they have a terrific scheme over there, which I refer to as social Velcro. They're not just giving them cash and kudos and, and encouraging them with all sorts of biodynamic practices to, to grow better coffee and, and concentrate on quality. They've also done weird, great stuff like introduce volleyball as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, a pastime to have in villages. and 300 volleyball courts now amongst these 24,000 farmers. So there's plenty more to do. But it keeps the youth there instead of migrating into the squalor of the cities. They've got a reason to stay. They've got a social activity happening in the village. So as I was saying before, uh, in the future, perhaps you know, everything will be a cafe. There seems to be no let up in the, in the thirst, for, thirst for coffee and the socialising that that engenders and the conversations we have over coffee and the ideas that it generates. Um, and in the future, perhaps the cafe will also be everything. There'll be all sorts of things going on there. No bad thing, because uh, in my view, good people drink good coffee. Thank you.